Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Come on, let's bless him in this place. Come on, let's give him some praise in this place. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns in heaven and earth with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Tell two, three people around you, God has a miracle for you. Amen. How many believe that, that God has a miracle for you? Yeah, yeah. Come on, give him a praise. Amen. We give honor to God who is the head of our life through his son, Jesus Christ, and the precious Holy Spirit. We thank God. We give reverence to the absence of Pastor Mamie Tarver, who had to minister out this morning. And we thank God for all of our other pastors, ministers, you, the precious people of God. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. We thank God for those of you that are in this sanctuary and those that may be viewing this telecast. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I... I'm believing and receiving that God is up to something good. God is up to something good. Amen. Get your Bibles, if you would, turn to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. We'll look at verses 41 through 46. Look around, make certain that everyone has access to a Bible. If not, share your Bible, you don't mind. Amen. And once you have your Bibles, can you stand? Amen. For the reverence of God's word. Repeat this with me. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I shall have what it says I can have. I will be what it says I'll be. I will do what it says I can do. I will say what it states I can say. I am, I know I am, a living recipient of the manifested promises of God's Word. You believe that? Give them a shout in this place. Amen. Our reader is going to let you know where they're reading from. First King. Amen. They'll tell you what they're reading. I'll be reading out of the New King James Version. First Kings, chapter 18, verses 41 through 46. Through 46. Amen. Amen. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing, and seven times he said go again then it came to pass the seventh time that he said there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea so he said go up say to Ahab prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain so Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to lift up, amen, that 41st verse, if you would, in your Bibles. Can you read that verse with us? And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of the abundance of rain. I want to talk with you for, in the time that's allotted to me from this subject. I hear the sound of abundance. Say that with me. I hear the sound of abundance. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, 
I hear the sound of abundance. I want you to touch and agree with me on these several things as of our reading his written word, hearing his spoken word, seeing the rhema word, we should now begin to experience the manifest word, enjoy the fruits, prosperity, success, the victory, protect of his word in Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands before the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, as the servant has decreed and declared, be it so in Jesus' name. Give him a praise because he's going to do just that. I hear the sound of abundance. We're living in a time where there's so many noises, there are so many distractions, there are so many people that are stating what they say they hear and we realize that we are a product of what we hear. I know they say usually you're a product of what you eat, but you're also a product of what you hear. And we realize that, and let's look at some examples perhaps. This past week, it was talking about this uh, hurricane, this storm called Dorian. And just because of it, and, and please understand where I'm coming from on this, you know, it was necessary for people to be in preparation. But then you find that there are people who would put more preparation in a storm and a hurricane than they would about their souls. I'm going to teach today. Then I go back not long ago, there was this mad rush for some chicken. People will get in line hours. People were fighting because of chicken. They heard the sound about chicken. I saw people doing Facebook lives because of chicken. And it's amazing that for one meal, that folk will go all out of their way for a sound of chicken than they would for their souls. I know we don't normally hear this kind of preaching often because people like to hear the feel-good type sermons. But let me share something with you. Chicken gets old. Storms have been known to cause a lot of disruption. Am I talking to anybody? And so here I have some good news that there's a sound of abundance. Let's look at this particular text. Is anybody going to help me today? So let's look at this particular text. We have to go back to chapter 17 of 1 Kings. You don't have to go there now, but when you get a moment, you can note it. That there, the prophet Elijah told Ahab, he said that there shall not be any rain for a period of three and a half years. Are y'all with me? That's 36 months. And for any ground, any earth, not to experience any type of water for that extended period of time, it's going to bring about some chaos, it's going to bring about some parchment, and also it's going to agitate some attitudes. Am I talking to anybody in here? And so the text says that there should not be any rain for a period of three and a half years. Now watch this. Also in that text, there was a servant to the king who, when he heard those words, just like people today, when they hear a word from God, they want to dispute it. They want to rebuttal it. They want to say, it's not going to happen. They want to say, oh, you just making things up. They want to say, oh, I don't know why they just trying to build people faith and knowing that it ain't going to happen. But how many know that the devil is a liar? It's amazing if I can pause for station identification on how that people would listen more to what the devil is saying than what the word of God is actually stating. Am I talking to anybody in here? So the text goes on that where it says that the prophet Elijah told him, he says, well, since you're doubting, watch this now, if you're taking notes, you want to note this, since you are doubting, then you won't get a chance 
chance to experience the abundance. Uh, are you hearing me? So you have to be careful on who you listen to because they can cause you to miss your inheritance. Also now we're moving forward, fast forward. Now we're in chapter 18 and we're at this juncture where if I may just look at a couple of verses here if you would. Um, it talks about how that it came to pass um, that the word of the Lord that um, said go present yourself to Ahab. He was telling the prophet Obadiah, he said go present yourself to Ahab and then let him know that I'm going to meet him. Now, it's amazing, I was reading this text and listening to this text and then it was amazing that Obadiah was a prophet. Stay with me on this. He was a prophet and what he said to Elijah, he says, why would you set me up to go after Ahab and then the spirit of the Lord will take you somewhere else. Oh, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I watch it. So what you're saying, and, and, and so it was amazing that Obadiah could sense some things. He, he knew how God would move with Elijah, but watch this now. But Elijah said, no, 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 no. I got you. Oh, you hear me? There are times that you have to trust God where he said, I got you. Oh, am I talking to anybody in here? Because why? We seen some stuff. We heard some noises and some rumblings that uh, so-and-so was sick and they died. So and so lost their job. Somebody else lost their house. Somebody else lost their money. So we hearing all kind of noises, and so all of a sudden that sound. And let me tell you, so I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this out. That sound is not too bad if it just gets your ear, but it's when that sound get in your spirit. Oh my God! Oh, you hear me? So, so what are you saying? So, so that sound had got in his spirit. He said, "Like, whoa, 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 Elijah! Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me!" He said, "Haven't you heard how I served? Haven't you heard how I hid those prophets from when when, when uh, Jezebel? And I'm gonna tweet on that one day when Jezebel was uh, uh, after the after the prophets, and I I hid them in two different." locations? Well, don't, that, don't that deserve something? You know, why would you just do it? Do me like that. Anybody ever been like that? God, why would you allow me to go through this encounter? Why Why would you let them hit my car? Why, why God, what you, why would you let my house catch on fire? God, what did I do wrong? Am I talking to anybody in here? But it's the sound. So the text text says, don't worry, I got you. I got you because Obadiah reminded Elijah, said, Elijah, come on now, said that every time the Ahab thought you were somewhere, he sent people to kill you. Are oh, you hearing me? Let me just pause for station identification. Because of your assignment, the enemy desires to kill you. But I got good news. <laughs> the Bible says no weapon that is formed against me shall what? Let me help you understand. No weapon most people attribute it to be a gun, a knife, or a stick or something. But let me tell you that no weapon also indicate words that people put against you. Mm. Oh, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this now. So the text says, the text says now, uh, he, he goes through that. And so uh, another part of the scripture, it talks about how that um, there, there was a showdown. I'm going to paint a picture for you. There was a showdown. And so in the showdown that the people were, because Elijah asked him a question. Watch this, and I pose the question to you. How long will you be caught 
between two opinions. In the King James, it says, how long will you be betwixt? Uh, Y'all with me? I used to love the way my father would say he he would like put a little edge on it. He said, how long would you be so betwixt? I mean, like you almost saw something turning, you know, when he was saying it. And so in other words, we got people today that are betwixt. Mm-hmm. That one day they're serving God and then depend upon what trend is going, that's the way they're going. I, 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 it's amazing that church people put on church looks for Sunday. But Monday through Saturday, just to, I mean, I'm only human. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so they go that way. But, but listen, we was human when we were born. <laughs> Are you hearing me? That's why in John chapter 3, ye must be what? Come on, give God some praise right there. So now we're at this juncture of the text where he says, uh, 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 how long will you be between two opinions? And so he said, you know what? Let's settle this thing once and for all. Let the prophets of Baal get two bulls, two oxen. Watch this now. Isn't it so amazing how Elijah set the stage for this? He says, since that there are 450 of them, let them get the oxen for them and for me. Oh, I, I, mm, I'll tell you something, get ready to happen for somebody. Watch it now. When he says, let them get the oxen for them and for me, here's what's happening. He's saying, just in case they thought I did some trickery, they brought the ox. <laughs> I don't know who this is for, but God given to show off in your situation. Uh, so the text says, I, I got to hurry, I got to hurry. The text says that they, so somebody probably said, well, theologically, why would you be incorporating that segment into the abundance? I wanted to shout, I wanted, but I got to show you how you build up to the abundance. It will explain why you're going through what you're going through. <laughs> oh, watch this text. So, so the Bible says, watch this now, the Bible says that in that text, he says, says, uh, uh, I want you to go ahead and, and then call your God. Are you with me? Call your God. So they kept calling and calling and calling. It got to noonday. He said, you know what? Maybe he went on a journey. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he put out a do not disturb sign. You need to d- do something. And said, 450. Could y'all, just, could y'all just say, hey, hey, hey. Could y'all just say that? Right. See how that sound down? Sound nothing like Jesus, right? What's this down? So anyway, <laughs> that was the point for that. So watch this now. So they're calling on their God, whatever the God's his name. Now, because they were calling on their gods, they had 450 prophets of Baal. Watch this now. A friend of mine, watch this now. He said, Willie, and I think I shared this one time. He said, Willie, see, you all have it easy because you believe in Jesus, right? Uh huh. I said, yes, I do. You know, he says, he said, you all got it easy because you only have to call on one. He said, with us, we got, you know, a lot of them. I said, I know, because see, this is why you need to study, right? I said, yeah, because you believe in polytheism, which means you believe in the multiplicity of God, you know? So today it might be the light bulb, tomorrow it might be the flowers. He, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, so I chose one. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so he, he said, so I'm hoping that it works for me. Uh huh. See, but while you hoping, my hope is built in nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but I wholly lean on Jesus. Come on, give him a shout right there. So the Bible says, fast forward, the Bible says they call the call, the call, nothing happened. So now it's getting closer to the time where sacrifices are supposed to be offered. So Elijah says, all right, here's what I want you to do for me. The ox that you all got, I want you to pour some water inside the trench. And then I want you to pour some more water. Anybody getting this? I want you to pour some more water. Then I want you to get some more water. Are oh, you hearing me? Until the Bible says, until the water spilt over. 
excuse me, I had a Holy Ghost moment. Watch that. Until they spilled over. Now, watch this now. Now, here's what Elijah did. He started calling on God. Now, before you get ready to see the abundance, you have to know who you call in in order to know who bringing the abundance. Mm. So he said, God, can, let me just read it for you. Can I just read it? Can I read it? Uh -huh. Watch this, this. Watch this now. This is good. This is good. This is going to bless you, right? Come on, give God some praise. Uh -huh. And so here he says in verse 33, he put the wood in the, in the order, cut the bull in pieces, watch it laid on the altar, fill the four water pots with water, and pour it in the burnt sacrifice. Watch this now. He said, do it a second time, verse 35. He says, so the water what? Ran all around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. Now, you gotta understand, visualize this, this big open, Basin, whatever it was, the altar, right? And it also had a trench. The trench would, would go around it so that um, it would make certain that anything inside would be capped in. Oh, y'all oh, with me? Watch this now. Oh, tell you, my, my miracle getting better right now. Watch this now. Oh, say it like you really believe it. And so watch this now. And so verse 36, uh, it says, watch this. That aligned to the prophet, watch this in the evening. Let me read the whole verse. It came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that aligned to the prophet came near and said, Lord God, watch this now. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, what? let it be known this day that you are what? God in Israel, and I am your what? Sir, so what Elijah... Excuse me. What Elijah was doing is the people who were criticizing him, the people who were ostracizing him, the people who were talking about him. He said, God, let them know you, my God, and I'm your servant. See, if you're going to pray, you need to know that you got the right God and the right God know you. Watch this now. Is this helping anybody? Watch this. Um, and then watch this now. He said that uh, you, uh, you, I'm your servant that I have done. Watch this now. I have done all these things at your what? What? What Elijah is telling us, he gives us a important principle. He said, don't do stuff on your own. Sunday. Woo, Sunday. I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this now. Don't do stuff on your own. Don't say something is God and God didn't say it. Because you don't have to prove God. God will prove himself. You just have to trust God. Watch this, verse 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know. Oh, oh, by the way... Since the 450 prophets, they were calling on their God, the people heard. Are y'all with me? Imagine if there was 10,000 people, if there was 100,000 people, they all heard the 450 prophets. Are y'all with me? And so now the same people that heard them call on the false pseudo God, watch this now, they now hear Elijah calling on the true God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. And so he says, watch this. He says, hear me, O Lord, hear that this people may know. He don't even call them your people because why? They had been betwixt. Watch this now. And so he said that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts what? Back to you. Do you not know there's some church going people that have turned their back on God, but yet they still come into God's house? <laughs> Watch this now. It says, then, watch this now. And verse 38, y'all y'all will see this right here. Then the fire of the Lord what? Fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it what? Licked up the water that was where? In the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. They, they said, the what? The Lord, he is our God. The Lord, he is God. 
Now there's something else I need to say before I get into the abundance. I know y'all ready. Y'all got y'all got your dance ready. Watch this now. And so verse 40, again I'm gonna paint this picture for you. Verse 40 says, Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let them what? Not one of them escaped, so they what? Seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and what? Kill them there. And I teach this thing. See, what had you, you got to get rid of it right there when you get your breakthrough. See, the problem is we're getting delivered, but we keep allowing what was we're getting delivered from to live. So just in case we get bored, just in case God ain't acting fast enough, do we just call back on the stuff he delivered us from? So he says, seize them. Kill them. Whoa, 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 whoa now. Elijah, the Bible said, he's the one that slayed them. Now, I ain't got time to tell you how one man could slay 450, but I will tell you this, that God did it. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but God did it. Yeah. Oh, son, God, give him a real praise right there. So now we're, we're now able to transition into the text that was read in our hearing, but I need to bring it all together. Ah, there's one more note. <laughs> What's this now? In chapter 17, there was a widow woman that right after Elijah had said that there shall not be any rain for a period of three and a half years, two key things occurred before we get to the abundance. Somebody ought to say, what was it? The first thing is that God continued to build the faith of Elijah. <laughs> See, what you're going through, God is using that as a tool to build your faith. Somebody going to help me here. Somebody going to help me here. What I need, what I need, what I need. All right. Watch this now. Everybody see this little glass. Give me an offering basket or something. Give me a large basket. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Yep. Bring me something. Bring me something. Watch this. Yep. Here it comes. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Now, if your faith is at this level... You're not ready for an abundance here until you get prepared to receive this. Your receptacle has to change from this thought process about God to expanding this level about God. Because if not, it's going to be like that altar where the water was filled, but it ran over. Even though God is bringing us into overflow, he's not bringing us into losing it. Are y'all with me? So he has to expand our thinking to hear. You can't talk here until you've been through something to expand you to get here. So when Elijah, when Elijah uh, had uh, told them about the rain and about how that they, uh, there would be no rain, God says, I didn't say that you wouldn't experience no blessing in the drought. Ah, uh, y'all with me, y'all with me, y'all with me, y'all with me. Watch this now. So the text says in chapter 17, you don't have to turn there, but you can go there when you get a chance. It says this, watch this, that, watch this, and that Elijah had, uh, 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 went to this brook called Cherub. God said, go down there, I got a provision for you. I don't know who this is for, but God says, I got a secret provision that I'm about to release to you. 
Okay, the two people got it. Okay, watch this now. So the Bible says that while he was there, watch this. Oh, it's good. I had a whole ghost one. Watch this now. The provision came from angles that Elijah never experienced before. Nowhere else in scripture where it shows that a raven brought provision. Ah, Lord, Lord, Lord. See, what is he saying? Can I bring it where some folks is? He's saying, you ain't got to go to, my father used to say it this way, you ain't got to go to the candy store and play a number. Oh, ain't nobody in here. Nobody in here. Nobody in here. Watch this out. So it says that he made provision. But watch this now. God don't want us to get comfortable with the provision. Because then we start assuming he automatically going to do it. So God has to build our faith at different levels so we can go from here to going what? Here. How many want to be right here in your faith or bigger? I said, how many want to be right here in your faith or bigger? Now watch this. So the Bible says, in that chapter 17, says that he went through all that. Watch this now. He meets this what? Widow woman. The widow woman had what? They used to say it this way, but Larry, a situation. She had a situation, right? So, Apostle, why are you tying all this? And I want to hear about the abundance. Tell your neighbor, I do too. Mm-hmm. Watch this now. But I got to show you how it's going to work. Watch this now. So God builds the faith of Elijah in the provision. Are are you with me? But now that provision dried up. Oh Lord, I might as well I might as well park on that block a bit. That provision dried up. Some of you keep trying to dig up dried up provision. You keep digging, you keep looking in the same area, and God said, I done moved on to another spot where I got you covered. And so he says, if I can provide at the brook cherub, and if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and all they that dwell therein, and a cattle upon a thousand hills belong unto the Lord, how come we can't trust them beyond the cherub? Watch this now. Watch this. So now we get there and uh, we get there in also in round chapter 7, chapter 18. Oh, 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 oh. In that text it says that because why? Somebody's going to need your faith to become a booster cable to their faith. Because some folks' faith have died out. See, a college degree don't give you faith. Money in the bank don't give you faith. You got to trust God for increase in faith. Text. Text says that she says, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. He, he infringed upon her space. Anybody know about that? See, I'm, I was taught that some women don't want you in their space unless they invite you. See, just because you walk close up to a, a, a woman, it don't mean she invited you into her space. <laughs> Are you with me? Can, can I teach this? Like, see, you see, when a woman, I, I, I just use this as an example. Okay, but when, but when she invites you into her space, she gives you a signal you in. That's a whole nother lesson. So the text says, what's <laughs> I'm 64. What's this? <laughs> so the text, says, the text says, watch this now. The text says that the son of the widow woman died. 
Okay? Now, she's saying because she made also made provision for the for the man of God, he died, the son died. She said, whoa, 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 time out. You see how it is when God used you to be a blessing to folk and a gift to people, if the gift ain't, you know, if their, their blessing ain't working the way they thought it was, then all of a sudden they want to call you on the carpet. They want to like, ah, 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 I trusted you. I, 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 I thought you was a man of God. I thought you was a woman of God. I thought you heard from God. Well, it's amazing you got this far from that word. <laughs> watch, this. watch this now. So the text says die. Watch this. So you move fast, move, move. God, I want to get to this verse yet because y'all want to shout. Because watch this now. So the text says, oh God. Watch this now. It, there come times in your walk with God where even your faith gets tested. You, you've been trusting God and then he been moving and you've been giving your 60 second praise report. And, and then, you know, uh, everybody, oh, praise God. You know, they're coming out to see your new car. They heard you got a job, you know, and they believe you're tired. Then, you know, all that kind of good stuff. You know, and so then, then all of a sudden there comes a part where it looks like your faith get tested. Mm-hmm. I, anybody ever been there? You know, and so, and so uh, uh, he, he said, God, listen, I know who you are. I'm kind of going to paraphrase on this one. I know who you are. So I, I know that you didn't bring me this far to leave me. Oh, oh you hear me? So, sometimes you got to talk like that. You know, I know some folks get so deep. I'm always walking with the Lord. Yeah. Well, I'm walking with him too, but there comes some time. I wonder, is he walking with me? Watch this now. And so the text goes on to describe how he, he laid on top of the boy. Mm. Oh, Shunda. Oh, Shunda. Watch it. He laid on top of the boy and the scripture says he breathed. be so anointed that your shadow can heal folks. Mm -hmm. Your shadow can cause demons to come out. Your your shadow. And if you ever talk, mm, that's why the enemy want to take your testimony. That's that's why he want to take your praise because he know that if you ever speak, when your voice comes out of you, mm-hmm. it don't sound like Cheryl Blunt. It don't sound like Larry Evers. It sound like the voice of God. So, I tell your neighbor, I hear the sound of abundance. <laughs> so now, now, we're, we're back in this 41st verse and so he tells Elijah oh boy I got so many points in this thing he tells Elijah he said uh, to them uh, uh, he said go tell, uh, tell, go tell Elijah go and eat and drink for there is a sound of an abundance of what? rain mm-hmm. now notice it doesn't mention who he told (laughs) cause why some folks I'm going to be teaching on this soon so hung up on their title that they can miss being a gift am I talking to anybody and so he says go tell Elijah go and eat and what drink but wait a minute help me understand if there is going to be a rain, why he don't tell Elijah just go? Well, why, what's this now? Because God says, enjoy the meal at this level. Because what you about to eat ain't going to be like what you had. Give him a shout right there. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. So the Bible says, so Ahab went up and what? Eat. To eat and what? 
drink. Oh, this is also important. If you're going to experience the abundance, you have to make sure your obedience meter is in tune. <laughs> uh, are you with me? You got to you got to make sure. You you got to make sure because you don't want to go through all of that hell and miss your abundance. Am I talking to anybody? So, so, Shandai, I feel the Holy Ghost. Watch this now. And then Elijah said to him, go up and eat and drink. So he went, verse 42. And, and verse 43, and said to his servant, now you go, but don't go up and eat. Some folks get upset because they're not benefiting from what some other folks are benefiting from. Had he had this attitude like some church folk, he said, that's not fair. How is it that he get a chance to go eat and I still got to fast? <laughs> Here's another principle in the text. <laughs> you can't always eat somebody else's meal. Because <laughs> you can't go through what they're going through. <laughs> oh, Lord, look at this. Look at this now. So he says, now he said, but I got an assignment for you. Yeah. He says, you go now. Watch this now. Mm -hmm. He said, you go and uh, uh, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked, verse 43, and said, there is what? Nothing. I can imagine he probably said, it is nothing with an attitude. I don't know why you sent me there. Tell your neighbor, watch your attitude. I don't know why you sent me there. I, I don't know why I had to miss food. Because see, some folks can't do their assignment because of the attitude. He says, what? I don't see nothing. I mean, I could, I could just imagine how he must have been. All right? I tarbonize it. Watch it now. And so he sends him seven times. Seven times. Are you with me? So, so I know probably by now he's really either in a jacked up moment or he done now got delivered on the seven times. <laughs> See, some folks keep asking the question, how come we got to hear the same sermon over and over? It's because you didn't have the right attitude when it first came. Oh, Lord. That's half the church. Watch this now. And so he says, watch this now. Then it came to pass. Somebody said, then it came to pass. The seventh time on verse 44, that he said, there is a what? Cloud. As small as a what? Man. What is it doing? Rising. <laughs> it's what? I can't hardly hear you. It's what? The rising is an example. And also an encouragement. Your miracle's on its way. See, when we get a prophetic word, we're expecting us to go from here to here in nanoseconds. But God said, no, 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 no. Because if I bring it to you like that, you'll waste it. Then, instead of just doubting me at this level, now you're going to doubt me at this level, which is going to make your destiny impossible. Ooh, watch this now. So the text text goes on. It says, uh, 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 now, so he said, go up, say to Ahab, what? Prepare your chariot and what? Go down before the what? Rain stops. Now, verse 45, now it happens. Somebody say what? Uh-huh. In the meantime, that the sky be became what? Are you with me? You ain't you close your Bible. It became black with what? Clouds and... Okay. Can I bring this in? Oh, Jesus. Can I bring this in? Watch this out. The clouds is an indication it's about to happen. Watch this now. 
But then it says, and it was what? Black with clouds and what? Wind. So what God is getting ready to do is blow your way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all, y'all got this? He's getting ready to blow your way. I, 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 I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta share this. I, in my study, I found this, that water is composed of two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. The electric or galvanic spark decomposes them, and they become air. When recompose, they form water. <laughs> oh, give it a go somewhere. Are y'all with me? Can, can I say it one more time? Water is composed of two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. The electric or galvanic spark decomposes them and they become air. And when they are recomposed, they form water. I got some teachers in here. I, I, are y'all with me? So, so, so what is the same? The lightning acts upon the hydrogen and oxygen, which are found in the atmospheric air. They are decomposed, and water or rain is the consequence, which is being heavier than air falls down in the form of rain. So if Elijah is saying... Hear the abundance of rain, he's telling you there's been a recomposition. And so the wind is going to blow the rain because the rain normally will drop. So if it's going to bring abundance, it's an indication I'm not going to get a little dibba dabba do you, but I'm about to be saturated. And I have to leave my position of doubt and fear and go where the wind going to blow. Because the Bible says that he saw it formed like a cloud. Anybody ever been in an airplane? You watch clouds and the clouds are moving. I remember Moses said, I don't want to be where your glory cloud ain't. So God is saying, get position where the cloud is about to blow. Woo, and the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezebel. Y'all give me a few more minutes. I need to point something out. Excuse me. He was at the a place of Jezebel because he, God didn't want Ahab to come back and lose his word. Getting back in the place of intimidation. So God said Elijah anointing to break the yoke. You need an 
anointing to destroy the demons. You need an anointing of the word of God to bring his word to pass. Give him a shout. So, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear the sound of abundance, not just rain, but an abundance, because you may not need rain. But you may need God to show up in another way. I prophesy to somebody right now that your abundance is going to get you debt free. Your abundance is going to get your body healed. Your abundance is going to catapult your business. Your abundance is going to clear the atmosphere that's in your home. Your abundance is going to put you in a place where you can be a blessing to somebody else. I hear the sound. So, I, I'm going to close, I'm going to close, I'm going to close. So, if you can hear the sound of bad news and it affects you in a negative way, how come you can't hear the sound of God's blessings and it affect you in a positive way? Even though Ahab got back to his place, God would not allow him to go in without hearing or allowing the sound. Are you with me? They allow the sound to go in that place with him. Oh, oh y'all hear me? See, that's why you can hear a word like this that encourage and inspire you but God knows what's going to meet you <laughs> in your home on your job in your neighborhood and for some of you on the phone when you get in your car so he has to make certain that you don't just go off of the emotions of the moment but you're going off a word Am I talking to anybody in here? You got to go off a word to know that I hear the sound. So whenever other voices try to come at me, I got a sound that's ringing. That sound is ringing. And it's resonating in my spirit. So it doesn't matter what I hear or what I see. Some praise. Come on, give them some praise. Give them, give them, give them. Woo. I hear the sound of abundance. Your three and a half years of drought is over. I said your three and a half years of drought is over. I 
say your three and a half years of drought is over. What's been agitating you and aggravating you is over. Notice one other point in that text. God had to cause Ahab to leave the place where the stronghold had him. Are y'all with me? Jezebel was a stronghold. Elijah, according to the text, was not able to function properly as a man because of the spirit of Jezebel on, on our Jezebel. Let me bring this in. I, I'm not going to go too deep in this. But Jezebel's spirit is not only on females, but it could be on some men. I'm not going to go all of there because I can. Watch this now. But I wonder, God had to bring him away. That all Ahab was able to do was to tell the stronghold the miracle that happened. That's, that was it. But yet Ahab got the potent blessing just because he heard the voice saying there's a sound of an abundance of rain. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> Who is it that said, I'm ready for to receive my abundance?